since 2007, one man has dared to expose the sinister power players on all sides of the phony political spectrum. Armed with over 30 years of research knowledge of the paranormal, government conspiracies, geopolitics, secret and ancient societies, the esoteric arts, and much more. One man's quest for knowledge has become a mission for the enlightenment of all people. Broadcasting from the conspiracy ground zero of Dallas, Texas, this is The Global Reality with your host, Josh Reed. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the broadcast. I'm your host, Josh Reeves. It is Tuesday, November 26, 2019. I am here with you, and it's good to be back, back here with you for more shows, more news, more information. Glad to be back with you. It's been uh, a rough go. We've had two weeks in a row where we haven't uh, reached our fundraising goals for the week um again as i've said before these fundraising goals are not for shits and giggles they're not uh what's the word i'm looking for they're not uh oh there's a word for it hopeful goal. Oh, well we we hope we could reach that goal no 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 these these are goals we have to set to keep the lights on keep everything going and keep the operation running and everything from week to week that's what it is and uh so <clears throat> for the past, I don't know what's it been, it's five, six days now. I've been without internet here at the studio. Um, you know, all we ask here is for people to support the work and support what we're doing and help us reach our goals every month so we can keep going. And um, luckily, I was able to get just enough to get the internet turned back on. So I'm back here with you today. So I'm glad to be back. Uh, but we are at zero again, and we are again, closing in on that crucial time of the month where we have to reach 100%. So, um, right now we need everybody coming in at whatever amount they can, so we can reach 100% of our goal by Monday coming up after the, uh, Thanksgiving holiday here in the U S to everybody else. It doesn't fucking matter. I, I, I hate even talking about this stuff sometimes. I mean, you know, stuff that, that happens when you have stuff like Christmas and things that happen all over the place, and that's different, but uh, sometimes I, I talk about these holidays and they don't, they don't fucking make a fuck to... Not all of our listeners are in the United States, so... Um, regardless of that, I'm thankful and grateful to be back here. These are uh, at least a couple few people that we had donate, but uh, we're not out of the woods yet, and uh, we've got to keep the lights on this week, too plus reach our 100%. So listen, uh, this past couple of weeks has has put a major dent in my productivity and uh, not being able to be online, not being able to do the film work, not being able to do shows, that's hurt us. And we've had so many fucking setbacks, we don't need any more. So it's time for everybody to, to, to nut up or shut up and, uh, Walk the walk, not just talk the talk. So, again, thanks to those that are with me. Thanks to those that do support my work. I love each and every one of you so much. Thank you so much for the people who are on board and get what I'm trying to do here. The rest of you, I don't, I don't know what the fuck is, is going through your head. Other than you just, you, you know, you want the information, but you don't want to have to, uh, contribute or help anything just like the people that want me to do their research for them not looking anything themselves which i'm not gonna you know I, i'm not gonna fucking do that again that's your that's your responsibility like i said last time but um anyway it's great to be back with you i'm gonna be getting into a lot of news a lot of information i'll be doing shows throughout the week 
Yes, even on the Thanksgiving holiday, I don't watch fucking football and that bullshit, so fucking staged ass stuff. I, I, I mean, there's just so many things. I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to go into a negative rant right out of the gates, but there's just so many things. I just see so many people buying into the BS and, you know, people, people that watch football and think that, 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 uh, I don't know. I think they're not being fooled. I, I, it's, it's, I just can't tolerate it anymore. It's so, it's such horseshit. Look, all, all these fucking sports, the majority of them, that's the only thing that most of them are fake. I mean, uh, you know the NFL is not even technically a sport it's sports entertainment you can look that up there's three sports that are classified as sports entertainment WWE wrestling roller derby and the NFL and what that means is is they can manipulate outcomes and everything else it's all you know plus it's all controlled by the betting and the gambling I, uh, for the past couple of years, have been doing a lot of research into this particular area, even though I've not talked about it a lot here on the show. I've done research into, uh, you know, statistics, gambling, the stage thing. I, I, I wish I lived, I, I need to fucking eventually move to like Vegas or something. Because I need to li- live somewhere where I can bet on fucking all this bullshit. Because I, I tell you what, I keep a little fucking a little ledger that I just make fake imaginary bets in just to see, dude. Yeah. UFC fights, NFL football, because once you're able to see the patterns and able to see how they make the odds and all this stuff and you see what, what their agenda is, it's dude, I I could probably be a multimillionaire in a short amount of time. If I was, if I lived somewhere where I could actually bet on stuff, and I'm, and don't tell me, oh, bet on the online shit. No, that's bullshit. They don't pay out the same amounts. Online betting and all that shit. It's it's horse shit. It's fucking horse shit. But seriously, once you figure it out, it's another one of the levels of 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 control. The one of the, another one of the uh, levels of the blinders they want to put on us. So. But God, I just, I, it's unbelievable that people, you know, they won't pay attention to any, any important issues, but they want to cry all day when their football team doesn't win or, you know, and be in a bad mood and, 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 and cause everybody, affect everybody else just because their stupid fucking sports team didn't win. Now my day, it's terrible here in Dallas. I mean, you should live in Dallas and experience what it's like here. Like, I don't even have to, you, you can always tell if, if the Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys are uh, losing, because if they're losing, <clears throat> you just go check Facebook, and it's quiet as a church mouse, no words, but then if, the, if they happen to be winning for once, oh, then everybody's gloating and acting like, oh, I'm in such a great mood now. If you couldn't allow the outcome of a football team <laughs> to affect your mood, whether or not you're in a good mood or not. You need to seriously re-examine everything in your life because you are fucked. I'm sorry. And if you're listening to this type of information, like my show, and still following the NFL, look, if, if you don't have a horse in the race and you don't have any, you're not attached to an outcome, you don't care who wins or loses, it actually can be quite enjoy and quite enjoyable. I've I've discovered that over the past couple of years. I haven't watched uh, you know NFL football regularly since <clears throat> since about the early 2000s. But a couple of years ago, I just, I watched a game and I started noticing, wow, wait a minute, when you don't have, when you don't care, when you don't care whether who wins or who loses, and you realize it's all bullshit anyway, and you see it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like wrestling. You know, when I was a kid, when I was five or six years old, man, I was, you know, we had the local wrestling here world-class championship wrestling with the Von Erics and a lot of the guys that went on to be in like the WWF. You had the 
We had the Ultimate Warrior before he was Ultimate Warrior. He was called the Dingo Warrior. He was local here in Dallas. The Iceman, King Parsons, all these people. And, uh, you know, these guys would really hurt each other. But it was also all scripted and, and everything else. And once you found out, then you heard people say, oh, it's fake. I don't like that. It's bullshit. And, uh, you know, then you didn't like it anymore. But then a lot of people, they, they're like, well, you know, they figure, okay. A lot of people had the attitude, oh, well, like, I know it's fake. If you know it's fake and you're aware of that and you don't have any attachment to outcomes, that's a real, that's a whole thing that you could get, you know, you could talk about a lot of things in life like that. Attachment to outcomes, that's the thing. You know, I've, I have, in, the whole time, I have never been attached to an outcome. I didn't get into doing this stuff attached to an outcome other than an outcome of wanting to make people aware of stuff that they weren't aware about. That's been my biggest, but that's the thing in life. Yeah, I think that's one of the things, the biggest things in life that causes the most misery. And you start to see that the powers that be have figured this out. And they've tried to incorporate this into everything, whether it be politics or sports and everything else. That's what the whole divide and conquer thing of getting you on a side, getting you on, on a team is about because it gets you attached to an outcome. And then they're able to affect your mental state one way or the other, depending on what the outcome is. If the outcome comes out in a positive way, that's to your liking that's still a part of the mind control because it gives you, it starts giving you a, a false sense of false bravado. All of this stuff, attachment to the outcome. That's the same thing they're doing with politics, with the elections. They want everybody worked up and forced into a side so they can get you right where they want you. If you can separate yourself from the outcome and separate yourself from these things and not have any emotional attachment to the outcome, you can actually start to realize a happiness that you never knew existed. Try it. It's a real thing. Anyway, <clears throat> God, I, I, I could just, I got so much shit I could rant about. Ugh. I'll save it though. Let me see here. All right. What do I want to get into here tonight? I was hearing a little, if I, I don't know what the deal is. Got some kind of crackling going on here with audio tonight. I apologize. I don't know what that is. It wasn't there before I started the show. And when I started the show, now I'm starting to hear it. Weird. All right. I guess I'll just jump into straight into the news here for you tonight. How nanotech will help the U.S. military reach Mach 5. The U.S. government is pushing into hypersonic weapons in a big way with at least five different weapons programs currently in development. Nanotechnology is shaping up to be a key tech that will enable delivery systems to survive traveling through the atmosphere at Mach 5 and above with carbon nanotubes showing promise as strong, lightweight material that rapidly sheds heat. Hypersonic weapons are weapons that travel at incredible Mach, at incredible speeds through the atmosphere. Hypersonics start at Mach 5, or five times the speed of sound, pushing an object through the air at really, really fast speeds. Is that the best you could do to describe that? <laughs> yeah, we know fucking 3,836 miles an hour. It's really, really fast speeds. That's the best you got? God damn. I, I, I talked about recently, man. These fucking people write these articles. I'll tell you what, that's the best you've got. We know. Yeah, we're aware. Wow. That's so enlightening. Really, really fast speeds. Uh, look, I, they've had this nano stuff forever. It's nothing new. Uh, but it's, you know, 
it's been largely a secret up till now because of uh, you know its providence isn't uh necessarily earthbound elon musk said his brain chips might solve uh, solve autism and schizophrenia a neuroscientist who implants brain chips has doubts Elon Musk wants to, to implant tiny mind probing threads into human brains. Yeah, and the same idiots that buy his fucking piece of shit cars will be lining up to get those fucking brain chips. Do you see that fucking ugly ass fucking truck? Ugh. So many people are like, oh, I can't wait. I'll buy one right now. I mean, what a fucking troll. They threw the, oh, look, bulletproof glass. And it fucking shatters. But, you know, to his credit, though, uh, I think they said that wasn't even a fucking, I don't think he was supposed to do that. I think they said the original was supposed to have, but that was just like, that. nobody talked, it was just a mock-up. You know what I mean? For the presentation. But it didn't go through it. I mean, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's, people have this misconception. I don't think bulletproof glass doesn't shatter. It still shatters, right? It's just whether or not the uh, the bullet or the object or whatever goes through it. Which it didn't. They threw that metal ball at it, but still, it was a little weak ass toss of that metal ball. It shattered it, but I don't know. I just, I, 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 I those Tesla, I don't, I don't get it. It's all hype. They cost too much. Good luck taking a fucking road trip in one, finding a place to be able to charge it up at. They've never, you know, they, no one's ever offered a solution for that. Listen, that's, you know, everybody, everybody wants a solution to, you know, this old ass antiquated tech that we use with gasoline engine. Everybody wants that. But the bottom line is until they allow stuff like, you know, free energy devices and things like that, fusion devices to be made available to the public. This is going to continue to be a problem and people are going to keep bu buying Teslas and Priuses and all this horse shit. And, uh, you know, in, in believing they're saving the environment by, by, by driving a Tesla. I'm just not buying it. I'm just not buying into it. In July, Musk announced that he's hoping to implant the first Neuralink brain tech connection systems into a human before the end of 2020. I bet Joe Rogan lines up and gets one of those. I bet he's clamored to get one, foaming at the mouth to get one. To achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. Neuralink is one of Musk's lesser known projects launched in 2016, more than a decade after both SpaceX and Tesla were up and running. The company's aim is to develop brain machine interfaces using implantable parts that could stimulate or observe and record brain functions. You know, let's get the, listen, let's get the, one, you know, put the cart before the horse here. Let's get the other stuff that you're trying to get to, to work, to work first, Elon. How many people have been killed? Have you seen how many people have died in Teslas? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how many people have died as a result of malfunctions of these Teslas. I mean, get your self-driving car and all that other horse and your bulletproof glass. Get all that other stuff perfected first. And then let's talk about brain chips and brain implants. I mean, your cars run over people, wreck into walls, take off by themselves. And we're supposed to trust that from the from the same company producing these brain chips <laughs> I mean, when people start fucking blowing their brains out and jumping off bridges oh it must have had a malfunction in his brain chip oh well well they'll 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 get the bugs out and it'll be working good in no time i don't know man i think that uh listen i, I this is i don't know what to say I, I just, I, I absolute fucking morons are going to be the people that get that take these things. Neuralink, I think it will solve a lot of brain related 
diseases could be anything from like autism, schizophrenia, memory loss. Like everyone experiences memory loss at certain points in age. Parents can't remember their kids' names and that kind of thing. Just the way he says this. I mean, could be anything like autism. I think at first we'll saw. Where's your proof? Where's where's the proof that it's going to do that? There is none. There's absolutely no scientific evidence or proof that it's going to cause this thing. But yet, nonetheless, he wants you to take this thing from the guy who makes cars that fucking kill people. Scientists who study the brain say a neuralink type machine would probably not hold much promise to solve any brain abnormalities or change the development architecture of the brain. Instead, neuroscientists believe that a more likely scenario for Neuralink is that the devices might help paralyzed patients navigate through the world with more ease. The work at Neuralink will definitely shed a lot of insight into how the brain and the mind works. You know, what it's going to do is it's going to interface with every other technology that's already invasive. This is the next step. And you think your Alexa or, or Siri or whatever bullshit is fucking, you know, listening to you. And now they want to put cameras in them too. <clears throat> and your, you know, your laptop cameras watching you recording everything. You, that, that's just a drop in the bucket. That's nothing. These people want to have, because everybody's brain is different. They want to have maps to everyone's brain because then they have the ability to, to individually target and manipulate people's brains individually, no matter what their independent physio physiological makeup might be. <clears throat> With the aid of a brain interface system implanted discreetly behind the ear, perhaps we could process multiple streams of information at the same time, or even speed up cognition. It's similar. It's a similar concept to one the U.S. military is working on with a tiny device at the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, right? Yeah, that's the real. Uh, that's the real story right there. And this is nothing new. You know, the military has used civilian projects like this for people for many years, and that's the way they sell the public on it. And they always sell it to us. So, oh, it's a great benefit. It's going to change humanity in the end. It's all, it's all just a, another way to track and control and trace. Why won't Jeffrey Epstein death conspiracies go away? Well, they won't go. I got an answer for you. They won't go away because they're being propagated to cover up. I talked about this reason to cover up the real truth of what happened. Because the, the discussion is never about what it should be about. Which I told you months before it happened was going to happen. That they were going to fake this guy's death. I mean, who kills himself right before a fucking bail hearing? The guy was about to be... Have a bail hearing and be able to be out. And he kills himself right before it? No, that's the whole thing. And they, they, and, and they want to propagate the conspiracy that, oh, he didn't kill himself. He was murdered. No. He's still alive. He's still out there. And you dummies are buying into this fucking so-called conspiracy because that's exactly what they want you to do. The Jeffrey Epstein case reemerged in the news cycle this week after two jail guards responsible for monitoring him were charged with falsifying records to conceal they had neglected their duties on the night of his death. Right. This is, you know, this, this is all just horseshit. The guy's not dead. But they want to continue to propagate that because that covers up this much larger thing of who's all involved in this stuff, like I told you about. A Fukushima operator accused of cover-up over contaminated water set to be poured into the Pacific. Japanese government has been accused of a cover-up after it refused to allow independent testing of water from the Fukushima power plant that's likely to be released into the Pacific Ocean. This should be an act of war. Um, we should send some fucking bombers over there with some fucking nukes to seal that some bitch up and feel and fucking finish the job that we didn't finish. At, we should have fucking finished after World War II. 
That's my opinion. Don't like it? Eat a dick. Send the fucking bombers over there. <laughs> Fuck Japan! <laughs> this is an act of war. If you're pouring fucking toxic radioactive water into the oceans that has the possibility to affect all life on planet Earth, this is an act of war. These, these, these people should be dealt with. They should nuke... Uh, what, 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 do they, what do they say in Aliens? We should nuke the site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Goddamn right. Unbelievable. Well, what else are we going to do with it? I don't know. Bury it up your ass or something. But pour it in the ocean and let's, you know, you guys fucked up. This is your fuck up. And now you want to poison the rest of the fucking planet. And, and possibly kill all life on the planet because you fucked up? It's a Japanese arrogance, man. That's what it is. They think they're smarter than everybody else, and they think they know better than everybody else. It, 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 I just can't even... It just it, it makes my blood boil even talking about it. We fucked up, so now we want to we want to kill everything else on the planet, or possibly risk killing everything else on the planet by just dumping it into the ocean. An alarming discovery in an astronaut's bloodstream: a study has turned up a side effect of human spaceflight that no one had observed before. Astronauts are more than cosmic travelers. Cosmic tra- None of our fucking astronauts have ever been cosmic cosmic travelers. Traveling to the outside of the fucking and low Earth orbit right outside of the atmosphere is not a cosmic traveler. Please. There are also research subjects and the careful study of what exactly outer space does. Again, not outer space. Fucking right above the atmosphere of Earth and low Earth orbit where they put satellites and shit at is not outer space. We talked about this not long ago, too. On the ground, researchers measure vials, vitals, draw blood, swab cheeks, and more. In orbit around the Earth, the astronauts do the work themselves. That's how they found the blood clot. An astronaut was carrying out an ultrasound on their own body as a part of a new study, guided in real time by a specialist on the ground. A similar test before the astronaut launched to space had come back normal but now the scan showed a clump of blood well make them take aspirin that'll thin their blood out and then you won't have to worry about that problem solved we're not we were we're not we were we're not expecting this a senior scientist at nasa and the author of the study published earlier this month this has never been reported before nasa doctors took over the astronaut wasn't showing signs and symptoms from the clot blah blah, blah. this is interesting because again we're supposed to believe that we went to the moon and back, what, six times, they said? And all the astronaut Freemasons that supposedly went to the moon all, and back all those six times, they didn't, this was never a problem. So why is this now just now becoming a problem? I believe it's just now becoming a problem because I believe they're just now being able to understand the effects of what space does on humans. And it's interesting because it just doesn't appear that we're that we're built or meant to be in space. I mean, unless you can build a craft that has an artificial environment in it, with artificial gravity and and oxygen and everything else that simulates exact conditions on Earth, I don't see it being possible. Which also brings up another very interesting point of view, because I've said this for many years. I don't believe that... I don't believe it's in the cards for us, I, I, for us to travel into space. I don't think humans are meant to, to be in space. And I think this is why the stuff that's been said about these 
portals that are within the earth and and it's a lot of them are supposed to be within volcanoes like the public uh, Catepe volcano in Mexico that's built where the temple of Quetzalcoatl is built right underneath it go look go look there what's the other one uh, Mount Shasta go look at any of these active volcanoes around around the world you'll see multiple videos reports going back years of uh ufos and whatnot public katepe is a great example there in mexico there's i mean you can find tons of videos of ufos flying into the center of the fucking volcano and every time the motherfucker starts to go active that's when you start to see it happen and that's what quetzalcoatl quetzalcoatl was supposedly last seen flying on one of those hindu vimana spacecraft flying into the volcano at Mount Popocatepe claiming that he would return one day. And supposedly that's where a lot of some of these portals that allow you to traverse great great distances across the galaxy and many of them are located here on Earth. This is why you had tons of different extraterrestrial races that have been here before. When you look at the depictions, the Aboriginal depictions, the depictions from Native Americans, the stuff that seemed like it's uh, uh, Sego Canyon in Utah and whatnot that depict, you know, all these crazy, various different looking. I think that that's what originally, I think that's what uh, stuff like the Egyptians and things like that. I think it's people that I think it's people that have just been flat marooned here. I don't think a lot of these so-called visitors and people who have been here in the past or trying to come here necessarily. I absolutely think that was the case with the Egyptians. I think the Egyptians, whatever the race they were, they, I think they got marooned here. Uh, set up shop. Set themselves up as gods. Used uh, slave labor to the humans to help them repair their ships or whatever and then left again and then left behind their civilizations and and everything else i think this is what they've been looking for in iraq all these years uh supposedly that's what saddam hussein had and why you know because remember saddam hussein was our guy he was our boy i mean the cia set him up in 59 he was our boy he was a controlled our controlled asset for many years. And then word started coming out around the late 80s and stuff that he was ex- excavating Nebuchadnezzar's palace and trying to rebuild Nebuchadnezzar's palace and the, the, uh, and, you know, doing all these archaeological digs on these ancient sites and putting together ancient technology. Don't forget, this is exactly why the first thing they did during the invasion in 2003 was we went right into the Iraq National Museum and stole all those antiquities. This is why they went and went after Saddam Hussein, even though we weren't told, you know, we, nobody said he had anything to do with 9-11. That's what this ancient technology and these ancient stargates are. They give you the ability to go from point A to point B. Like you're walking through a doorway with no effects from outer space or any of the rest of that stuff. I think whoever these people were that were here in the past, whether they you want to talk about the Anunnaki or whether you want to talk about, you know, the Egyptians, Atlanteans, whatever, I think that 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 they didn't I think it's a misconception. I don't see these people otherwise we would have found some ships here buried underneath the earth before now. I think that uh they came here through portals. And I'll do you one better. I think it's even possible. That's what I've come across from, from my work in, into the rock wall. As I think the rock wall might have possibly been some sort of, because uh, I mean, it didn't produce such mass amounts of energy using sound ray frequencies. I think it's possible, especially when you consider, this is one of the mind-blowing things that I found out about rock wall was, you know how the, uh, well, they don't do, we don't using the space shuttles anymore. Back when they were using the space shuttles, um, they there's certain entry points. I'm not sure exactly why this is. 
there are certain entry points. That's why they have to bring this. They would have to used to have to bring the space shuttles in to, when they bring them to land. They have to bring them over certain points that are suitable for re-entry into the atmosphere. And back in 1999, I remember this because I lived not far from Rockwall. I lived about maybe 10 miles from Rockwall back then. And uh, there was weather conditions or something. I can't remember. You know, something like that where they couldn't bring in the space shuttle to land at its normal traje- trajectory. They had to find a different, uh, a more another suitable location where you could come back in the atmosphere. And guess where that other second location happens to be located at? In Rockwall. And I remember seeing it. I thought, I thought it was a nuclear war, dude, because I hadn't heard about it. it was, you know, before information was right in your hands, 24 hours a day, seven days a week back then. And uh, you had to go to the library to get on the internet. But I I saw it and then then read later and found out that Rockwall, the area over right over Rockwall, happens to be one of these spots that is perfect for both exiting out of the atmosphere and entering into it. And I remember that bit of info, and it didn't mean anything to me much. But then you know, I, I started thinking. All the UFO sightings and stuff I've seen all my life around Rockwall and experience missing time, and then later finding out about the Rockwall and all that, and going, "Oh my gosh, it could be some kind of a launch pad. It could be some kind of portal, you know, opening machine. Who knows?" But I, I don't think that humankind is ever going to travel across the universe and across the galaxies if we keep pursuing these means that everybody keeps trying to pursue. Which also brings up other interesting stuff like like the Anunnaki, you know, some of the stuff about how they came in ships and, and there were landing pads and stuff. Well, if they did indeed come in ships and they were pretty close to us genetically but more advanced or whatever well then they had to have had a solution for what space travel does to the body and if if they did and we came from their dna we should have that in us too but we don't appear to so something's wonky there I think this is why there's been these reports of, you know, people f- you know, finding recovering crash UFOs and open them up, thinking they're going to see little green men. They open them up, there's just like pink goo inside. I've heard I, there was a story I heard many years ago about that. I I I, I think that uh, I don't know. There's something we're not we're not being told. There's something we haven't figured out. And we continue to find, it's just, I mean, th- this whole thing about the blood climb, it's just one of I mean, the stuff we already know. So it, it is fascinating. And uh, it, it brings up a whole bunch of questions, you know. Did, has anybody ever, from any race, ever traveled through space, unless their bodies are you know, have evolved to be able to deal with that kind of thing. I think this is why a lot of these UFOs and stuff are just probes. You know, they're just kind of like drones that we would send out somewhere. Anyway, I could go on about that all night. I don't, there's just a, I, it's some stuff I've pondered for many years. There's just stuff, there's just, a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense. When it comes to space travel, its effect on bodies, things like that. And, uh, you know, nobody, I mean, the fact that you had all these, I mean, God, aren't, 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 I know some of them are dead, but aren't there still people who went to the moon that are still alive? Nobody's ever thought to ask the question, how come they weren't affected by this? Just like they never want to ask the question of how come they were able to get pass back through the re- Van Allen radiation belts and not die from radiation poisoning. And also, how are they able to bring film 
not only through the radiation belts, but back through. Impossible. And I think it brings up, I, you know, I don't know. How deep do I want to go on this is a real question. Because I could go real fucking deep on this, man. Because it brings up a lot of questions. Because regardless of what you believe, you know, as far as spirituality and religion and stuff goes, one thing that I've learned from all my years of research is that we're absolutely, you know, you ever heard the police song, Spirits in the Material World? That's, I mean, that absolutely is what we are. We are spirits that have been basically, I've talked about this before, entrapped in dense material. That's another reason why I don't think traveling through space in physical carbon-based bodies is possible. And I think, I think eventually we'll figure out how to separate our spiritual bodies, our etherical bodies from our physical bodies at will and be able to go back and forth. If you read some of the stuff, like, I, you know, some of the stuff I talked about, like the Emerald Tablets of Toth and stuff like that, which, you know, I think some of that stuff is legit and I think other, I think some of it isn't. Uh, I don't put my faith in any kind of channeled information anymore, but the idea of what it talks about in there, the idea of being able to, you know, going into the, uh, into these different dimensions and, and having to, you know, your, how your physical body would basically be just be shattered and destroyed by the, the sound frequencies alone. I think that's going to be the future technology. But it's going to take long evolution, long evolution of understanding and, and growth in humans in general for us to get there. And we may destroy ourselves before we ever get there, honestly. But I think that's going to be the key. I think we're going to have to eventually figure out how to separate the soul, the etheric being that's in, that's essentially entrapped. I mean, we're soul entrapment is basically what it is. We're these spiritual beings that are entrapped in these, in these fragile carbon based bodies. If we can learn how to separate from that and become the multidimensional beings we're, we're meant to be, then we'll be able to unlock all the mysteries of the cosmos. But, Humans are still trying to do everything they think is possible within the realm and scope of this meat suit and and still living under the idea that, oh, you know, well, well when if you die, then that's it and it's over. And uh, I've never thought that was the case. Anyway. Podcast porn is on the rise and revealing Wild New Kings podcast porn. What? Audio porn, a buzzy new genre of X-rated erotic recordings, is the latest tool for intimate exploration and the greatest, if you ask, its flush community of fans. On Quinn, a free YouTube-like website to which users produce and upload their own recordings, stars like Hank Miller serve up titillating content designed to tickle your ears and more. I can be as naughty as you want. I can be as dominant as you want. I I, I need to get in on this. Really? Podcast porn? I'll, I'll get in on that. Yeah, you like that girl. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna eat that pussy. Mm -hmm. Oh, bring that ass over here, girl. Bring it. Put that ass on my face. <coughs> Drop that shit like a tot, bitch. Uh. All right, that concludes our, our podcast today. Is that what we're talking about here? Seriously? Yeah, come over here and sit on this meat stick, girl. Mm. I'm going to put it in you. I'm going to put it in you. Oh. What the fuck? This shit's out of control. What I look like is up to you. He says, I can be anyone. Yeah, I'm a big eight-foot stud with a 12-inch thick dick. I don't get it. It's like I don't get the whole ASMR thing either. It's just, I, I, I don't get that. <laughs>
I don't get the ASMR thing. This is retarded. You just want to listen to somebody on a podcast make sex noises? All that porn. All that fucking porn out there you could be watching. And you want to regress back to audio only? Uh, Just somebody making porn sounds? You need to go back to the 80s, motherfucker. You need to go back to the 976 fucking dial-a-dick days. You ever, that, you, ever, you ever see that Chris Rock movie you see before? When they go to their... <laughs> they go to pick up their third member, their third friend, and he's like working at a at a fucking sex line place. Like one of them in there, they're like walking through and looking at all the different ones. It's like 976 piss. Like some fat j- chick behind a fucking curtain going, oh yeah, here it comes. And she's like pouring a pitcher of water into a bucket and they go find their buddy and he, he's working like the, they, they, his buddy, their buddy's working at the gay sex line. <laughs> and he go over and he, he's like, try, he's like, come on, come on, let's go. He's like, he's like oh, still on a call. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'm licking your balls. Yeah, yeah, you got, you got big balls. You got King Kong balls. The biggest balls I've ever seen. I, I, I don't know, just big balls. Is that what we're back to? Uh, this shit makes no sense to me. And the ASMR thing where they... People getting off on people making sounds. I just It is fucking retarded. I don't know, man. The, the more time goes by... I, it, it does make you question your station in life. It's like... I... I hate to say it, but goddamn, man, I see their point. I see the elite's point to a certain degree when it comes to depopulation and all the rest of this stuff. It's like, fuck. All that porn. All that fucking porn. And you're going to beat off to somebody on a podcast making sex noises? Dude, if people are into that, I'm in the wrong fucking business. I need to get into it. Oh, yeah, girl. Bring that ass over here. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it raw with some jelly on it. Oh, yeah. Made me burp. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh I'm a bus girl. Oh, oh, oh I'm a bust. Oh, yeah. Keep, oh, keep it going right there. Oh, 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 I'm a bus girl. I'm a bust in your mouth. Yeah, I'm in the wrong business. Fucking bust podcast. What the fuck? People are fucked. Uh, speaking of people that are fucked, I watched that new uh, the documentary about the Bikram yoga guy. That was a little disappointing. I mean, I don't know. Uh, the, uh, it was all that just to show us that the guy's a scumbag and it's like people have known that guy's a scumbag for years there's been memes for 10 years I remember 10 years ago 2009 I remember there was that meme going around where he was like you know the chicks are in the yoga positions and he's got his hands like in their fucking cooters like thumbs in the cooters while their pussies are up in the air The biggest disappointment of that thing was they, they, they didn't even have the money shot clip in the whole fucking thing. I watched the whole goddamn thing waiting for the money shot clip to come, and it didn't. That was from like 2016. That was three years ago. That was a clip. That was a fucking clip that made people... That was people were started spray painting over the Bikram on their fucking uh, yoga studios. That's why I went from bi- being called Bikram yoga to hot yoga. People just started calling it hot yoga. Because there was that clip where it was from that HBO show. And the lady asked him about, you know, supposed rape stuff. And he said, I I do not have to rape anyone. Women will pay $1 million for one drop of my sperm. One drop 
One million dollars for one drop of my sperm. Dude, if I was making that documentary, I'd have had that motherfucker bookended with that clip. It would have started with that clip, and it would have ended with that clip. And they didn't even fucking show that clip. That's the most... <laughs> Dude, that's the most damning clip there is. It just seemed like there was some kind of agenda to this thing where it was like they wanted to... It was like they were trying to expose him in one way, but they didn't want to go all the way. It's very suspect. Um, what was most suspect to me, he talked about... Well, he talked about he got his green card from Richard Nixon because he, he used some kind of... Uh, he, he, his story is that he taught Richard Nixon yoga and he, Richard Nixon had a, a bone that was completely pulverized to dust. And yoga turned his pulverized bone dust leg back to normal. And so Richard Nixon gave him a green card. So in the documentary, they go and they said, we went to the uh, Nixon archives and we found no, um, no documentation that he ever met with Richard Nixon. And then that's it. Wait, excuse me? And see, most people don't even know to ask the right questions. They just take that and go, oh, well, he's, he's just a liar then. He must have lied about the Richard Nixon thing. Not Well, maybe, maybe not. The one way to find out, which makes this a completely pedestrian effort, you motherfuckers. This is, again, this is what pisses me off, man. These people have millions of dollars to make these documentaries. They get funding from Netflix, millions and millions of dollars. I have to fucking work on less than a shoestring and try to make movies for a couple of hundred bucks. And these motherfuckers can't even listen. You want to find out all you have, all they would have had to have done is go to the immigration office, find out they've got those records. If he's got a green card, they can find out in two seconds who the fuck approved a green card and gave it to him. They did not do that in this documentary. So that makes it even more suspect to me. Now, what they want you to do on face value, they want you to just take it and say, oh, well, he's just a liar. And that proves that he's a liar because the Nixon, uh, Archives don't have any record of him ever meeting with Bikram. Right, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Because, again, in the documentary, they didn't go and check the immigration office. They have, believe me, they've got records. If you got a green card and you got here, they've got the records on it. And they can tell you right there who gave this person a green card. They didn't bother to check that in this documentary. That's suspect to me. Um, and considering the time in the early 70s, in which this Bikram guy started, you know, right at the heart of the Nixon administration. If you've done your research like I have, you know that during the, Mix the Nixon administration is when you had the rise of these cults. That's when you have started to have the, the, the Hare Krishna movement grew and came uh, to fruition within the United States. was in the 70s. Remember, that was a butt of the joke in, in Saturday Night Live and TV. Remember that? You might remember if you're older than me. I don't remember it because I didn't experience it myself, but that was the, one of the running jokes. The, the Harry, Harry Christians would be all at the airports all the time. That's what they do. They set up, and they remember, they give people flowers at the airport. The Moonies, too. The Moonies came in under the Nixon administration. Uh, and that was when you started to have the rise of cults and the rise of the New Age movements that were all funded by the CIA and then the whole fucking Age of Aquarius thing where they knew that we were moving into a time period where people were going to start having spiritual awakening, so they started setting up cults and, and these phony New Age stuff and theosophical stuff and the books and all that and created the controlled New Age era to hijack spirituality because they knew people were going to be moving into that. So the fact that this Bikram guy came along at that exact same time when they did it is a red flag and highly suspect. And the fact that it started in LA and, you know, started with rich people, it's, it's just insane. But that, that fucking, that clip is gold though. One million dollars. Women will pay one million dollars for one drop, one drop of my sperm. The million dollar sperm clip. I can believe, I watched that whole fucking documentary they didn't have that clip in there. I was like, you, that, you, to me, they have you got no interest in trying to expose that guy. You ain't got that clip in there. 
Um, last week I talked about we had the show where I got into the history of uh, of weather modification, and uh, afterwards I started doing some more looking and digging into that. And boy, I did tell you I, I was going to talk about this on my. Uh, I was going to do that Dealey Plaza broadcast last week. We didn't end up doing. It. I was going to talk about this then, but uh, fascinating stuff here. I'll, I'll post links uh, up on. Uh, I'll put it in the uh, comment section of the video on YouTube, and I'll put it on uh, on our Facebook Global Reality Facebook page too. Uh, but I found declassified documents on the CIA's own website, CIA.gov. This is fascinating. Declassified documents from mid 1960s on weather modification, and uh, it says, "For your information, some attachments are provided which show the extent of interest and trends in weather modification research in the United States. For example, federal support for 1967 will be four times that for 1963, and over twice." as large as that in 1965. A copy of the letter from the pres from President Johnson to the Secretary of Commerce <clears throat> shows that an expanding program has White House backing. Remember I talked about that too? The agency... So th what's fascinating about this, and I'm not going to go and read all this, but I'll, I'll, I'll put post up so you can look at it yourself. It, if you scroll down here, as it talks about astrogeophysics and it's got a chart and it says federal support for weather modification millions of dollars fiscal year 59 60 61 62 63 64 65 66 67 and what's fascinating if you look you can see how the money that was spent on weather modification Increased significantly. Let's look at 1963. Department of Agriculture, 13 million. Or 0. 0.13 million, 0. 0.19 million. Then you look at 64, 65. The point is, weather modification technology, the spending the American government did on it increased dramatically under Johnson and increased dramatically right after the assassination of Kennedy. And um, I've never seen anybody talk about this. I've never heard anybody mention this. I mean, it says, Dear Jack, I thought your report to the Cabinet Monday on weather was exceptional. This is a field in which I want us to move ahead on to make a breakthrough. I'm convinced it's possible for us. Please express my appreciation to Secretary Holloman and Dr. White for their contribution to the Cabinet and presentation to the press. I understand both did fine jobs. If you think it appropriate, I would like to have your suggestions for a letter of commendation to Mr. Dunn and his staff in Miami on the job there they did during the recent hurricane. Sincerely, Lyndon B. Johnson. So it's fascinating. Um, you know, it, it, it does appear that this this was another one of the many, 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 many issues. It's just like I've said before, whether it's, we're talking about 9-11 or whether you're talking about JFK or any of these, none of these things, you know, people want to fucking go round and round and round in circles and believe me, that's exactly what they want you to do. They want you running on that proverbial rat wheel, never getting anywhere, chasing your own tail. Because people get this thing in their heads that for whatever issue you're talking about, there can only be one explanation. And then they want to argue about it. No, it's it. they did 9-11 because of this. No, they did it because of this. No, they did it because of all those things. I mean, any, of the, any issue is like that. They don't just do these things for one reason. Same with JFK. People argue all day. Why did they kill JFK? Well, it was because of this. Well, it was because of that. Well, it was because of communism. Well, it was that. Well, no, 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 no. It was a whole raft of things. But it's fascinating to see that weather modification was very much an issue back then. And it's, you know, in 59, you had 1.44 million being spent on defense for weather modification. Then you see, you can see right here in the chart, then you see the slow decline under Kennedy. It goes from 1.44 million in 1959 to 1.34 
million in 1960 down to 0.75 million in 61. Back up to and then to a high in 62 of 2.75 million, and then in 63 to the lowest it had been since 61 at 0.97. And as soon as Kitty's assassinated and Johnson is president, it goes goes up to 1.41 million. Now that's just the numbers for defense. Then you got numbers for Army, Navy, Air Force, ARPA, which of course was the Advanced Research Project, the precursor to DARPA. Federal Aviation Agency, the Department of Interior, the National Aeronautics and Space Agency, and the National Science Foundation. So it's fascinating to see that um, that weather modification appears to be yet another issue that uh, Kennedy was cutting funding on that the uh, military-industrial complex guys had a problem with. Fascinating stuff. Just never seen that before. Bang! The Navy, the Navy wants high-power electromagnetic weapons. These are the weapons that the Pentagon hopes to actually deploy one day. <laughs> oh, once again, I'm sorry if this pisses anybody off, but I gotta say it again. Nigga, please. Like y'all ain't been using fucking electromagnetic weapons for fucking decades. Sell that shit somewhere else, motherfucker. Not all of us are complete dumbass uninformed morons. Just most people. It's just like I've talked about with a, you know, every few months they'll roll out that rail gun thing. Like they hadn't already had the rail gun admitted they had the rail gun 10 years ago. Military researchers around the world have been studying electromagnetics as a weapon for decades. The most successful application has been in lasers. No, the most successful application has been in heart, motherfucker, but you won't say that. With the development of small, high-power systems, experts also have made advances in microwave weapons and non-nuclear electromagnetic pulses. The U.S. military first began to research the use of lasers in combat in the late 1950s, but it was not until 1973 at the first U.S. tactical laser, the Mid-Infrared Advanced Chemical Laser, or Miracle, a megawatt deuterium fluoride laser built by TRW was tested against aerial targets. Five years later, the Air Force Weapons Laboratory at Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, developed the first chemical oxygen iodine laser, the COIL. A wide range of lasers have been developed since then. including solid-state lasers and free electron lasers. Electromagnetic weapons offer the advantage of scalability for microwaves that heat the skin to make the target. <laughs> Again, that's old technology. The whole thing, I mean, that's stuff they've been using, you know, for riots and stuff, I'm using it on protesters for 20 years. The potential for such weapons could disable an enemy's ability to fight without killing or wounding anyone especially nearby civilians, has made their creation and deployment a major goal involved in this kind of research is the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA, of course. Air Force Research Lab, AFRL, Navy Research Lab, NRL, and the Army Research Lab, as well as the subject of considerable academic corporate research as the technology also has applications from medical to manufacturing. <clears throat> okay, then why are you... Why is the article all about electromagnetic weapons? Notice how they do again. It's just like what the stuff we were talking about with the brain implants. They've had this stuff for years. They've had the rail gun. They've had EMP weapons. They've had the rest of this stuff. But when you have this stuff, then you have to explain where you got it from. And since a lot of this stuff came from back engineered technology, they don't want to admit that, so then they have to come up with these backstories of how they invented it. They've had this stuff for years. The problem with all of this stuff and all this back engineer stuff is how to introduce it into the public without revealing where it came from. Boy, this one right here. I got to tell you, this one right here made my blood boil. But right after it made my blood boil... It also it made my blood boil for a second until I stepped back and realized, motherfucker, you're the reason why this happened. This is unbelievable. Um, 
What a fucking cock sucking liar. Beck, you know, Beck, not Jeff Beck, Beck. I'm a loser, baby. Beck says, I'm not a Scientologist in, your, in a new interview. Really? Really? You're not a Scientologist, huh? He's so arrogant, he thinks that we don't remember or don't can't go look on the internet and pull up all the stories and all the news articles and interviews he's done where he's not only for years admitted he was a Scientologist, but in fact defended them as well. His dad is a famous um, conductor. His name's Beck Hanson. His name's David Hanson, I believe. Uh, I, I don't remember when this was. 10, 11 years ago, the band Kiss did this. I think it was live in Australia. It was like a Kiss symphony thing. And they had the, the played live with an orchestra, and they had all the orchestra people in Kiss makeup, and they had the guy conducting the orchestra was in Kiss makeup too. That was Beck's dad. He, his wife, Beck's wife, is, is uh, Marissa Rabisi. Giovanni Rabisi is her brother. If you, if you ever saw, remember Days of Confused, the movie Days of Confused? Remember, I love them redheads, man. Yes, I do. Hey, there's a party at the Moon Tower full of kegs. Everybody's going to be there. Y'all to go. Uh, all right, we'll be there. Say, you need a ride? Uh, no, I got my own car. Thanks. But y'all ditch two geeks in your car with getting with us. That's all right. We'll worry about that later. I'll see you there. The redhead. I love them redheads, man. I almost went into I almost went into crooked bell there for a minute. I better watch it. God damn. I like him redheads too. Even the curtain told Mash Drape. <laughs> I fly on that little lead express. I'll eat that red pussy too. I don't care. <laughs> it's good. Hillary don't like it though. Um Yeah, that's Giovanni that's uh, Marissa Rabisi. She's Giovanni Rabisi's sister. They all grew up together as kids in Scientology. Now he's not. Now he's saying that. Oh, I never had anything to do with it. Beck, long considered to be one of the most prominent musicians associated with the Church of Scientology, has revealed in a new interview that he's no longer a member of the controversial organization. Speaking to the Sydney Morning Herald on the day of his new album Hyperspace was released. Yeah, no motherfucker, you've been exposed. Your fucking phony religion has been exposed as a CIA front. I exposed Scientology in ways nobody else had done previously in my first Spellcasters volume. All those fucking Going Clear and all those other films, shill documentaries. None of them explored the real basis for it, which is, is that whole thing is based on black magic and controlling individuals by conjuring up spirits within them and being able to control it. The Nazis were looking into it. We got their stuff after paperclip brought it. Watch Spellcasters 1. Now it's been exposed and he's trying to back off of it because he's hurt, it's hurt his record sales and he knows it because nobody's buying into any, any of these people's bullshit anymore. So now that he's got a new record coming out, now he's trying to separate himself. Dude, bullshit. Nobody's buying it. You're a fucking Scientologist. Let me just read these quotes. I think there's a misconception that I'm a Scientologist. I'm not a Scientologist. I don't have any connection or affiliation with it. Really? No connection or affiliation with it. So you didn't grow up in Scientology with your dad and with Marissa Rabisi and Giovanna Rabisi, and that's the reason why you got married to her and had a kid, because, you, you know, Scientologists, they stick together. You can't fucking marry outside. In interviews dating back two decades... Beck admitted that he was a Scientologist, although he never openly endorsed the organization. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. I'll read it for you. <coughs> My father, composer David Campbell, has been a Scientologist for a long time. But I've pretty much just focused on my music and my work for the most of my life and tended to do my own thing. I think it's just something people ran with. Oh, really? 
Beck's ex-wife, Marissa... Uh, oh, ex-wife now, huh? Ex-wife, Marissa Rabisi, and her brother, actor Giovanni... Well, they still had a kid together. Are both Scientologists, and the underground bunker lists Beck's longtime bassist, Justin uh, Metal Johnson, as a member of the church. Beck and Rabisi divorced in February after nearly 15 years of marriage. But again, it's a total lie to say that he that people just ran with that and there was no truth to him being in Scientology. Listen to this quote. This is from a 2005 interview with Beck and the Hollywood Reporter. Quote, yeah, I'm a Scientologist. Well, there you go. We really don't have to read anything more than that, do we? That, counter, that, that contradicts what you just said. Oh, it's just something people ran with. I'm, I was never a member. First sentence, 2005 article. Yeah, I'm a Scientologist. My father's been a Scientologist for about 35 years, so I grew up in, in it and around it and stuff. People can sort of say and do whatever they want. All I can do is live my life with integrity and raise my child and work hard and, and work hard for the people I work with. I don't have anything to hide, and I'm completely proud of my life. Listen, buddy. The bottom line is you reaped all the benefits. You only had a career and you only made it as a popular musician, not out of talent, but because you were a Scientologist. They got you where you are now because you're trying to separate from that. You're trying to change the story. Listen to what else he said. The singer also defended the church at the time. Quote, it's unbelievable the stuff they're doing. Education, they have all three centers all over the place for poor kids. They have the number one drug rehabilitation program in the entire world. When you look at the actual facts and not what's conjured up in people's minds, that's all bullshit to me because I've actually seen the stuff firsthand. So there he's not only admitting it, but defending them. You're exposed, Beck. I'm sorry. I, I, I lost all fucking... I used to be into Beck, and I lost all... I can't... You know, I just can't even listen to him now. I can't tolerate him. Uh, and, and not only that, but he's a fucking flat liar. And he's trying to change the narrative and separate himself because it's hurt him. It's hurt his career. But to sit there and act like, you know... He didn't get to where he is because of Scientology. It's absolute bullshit. There, I mean, look, Beck's fine and all, but there are 500 billion other musicians on planet Earth with way more talent than him that never made it, and they didn't make it because they weren't connected lifelong to the CIA-controlled Scientology. So, you're a loser, baby, so why don't you fuck off? Fuck you, Beck. Suck a dick. All right. That's it. That's all I got. I'll be back tomorrow with more. That's for sure. Again, we're at zero again, folks. We need everybody to contribute. Uh, by tomorrow, we need to raise an additional $200. We raised about 100 today. That's all gone because we had to pay the internet bill. So. Uh, but then again, we've got to reach our 100% of our goal. So just everybody hit it up. Get yourself some downloads. Get yourself a membership to the archives. Because uh, one day, and you won't really know when, one day there, I won't be putting out stuff for free on YouTube anymore. So it's a good time to go ahead and get yourself a membership to the archives. And plus, that way you'll get the shows as soon as they're, as soon as they're done. They get uploaded instantly to the archives. Uh, they take about five or six hours to get up on YouTube. So that's another way to do it. Anyway. We need everybody to contribute, folks, so we can keep going. And uh, I got to get back to work, get my productivity back up, because being without internet for as long as I have has hurt that significantly. So all hands on deck. Everybody give what you can. I love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Folks, this is Josh Reeves, and I'm here to tell you about a fantastic website, FixYourGut.com. FixYourGut.com can help you take control of your overall health. Are you sick and tired of suffering from indigestion, acid reflux, bloating, or abdominal pain? Do you run to the bathroom either all the time or hardly ever at all? Do you forget things often or have trouble concentrating? Are you depressed or anxious? Do you have IBD or SIBO? Digestive disorders are increasing in frequency because of our toxic-laden, fast-paced world. There are billions of microorganisms that live in your intestinal tract that have more to say about your health than almost anything else. 
Learn how to make sure your gut has more of the right organisms to improve your health and enhance your life. FixYourGut.com has over 200 free blog articles, and it's one of the most valuable resources on the planet to improve your overall health and well-being. Search either Fix Your Gut or We've Read the Documents on YouTube for the latest health and conspiracy information as well. You can also purchase John Brisson's book, Fix Your Gut, or get personal one-on-one health coaching to help get you back to living your life happy and healthy. Visit FixYourGut.com the ultimate source for all things digestive health.